So today I'll be talking about Starling X Edge deployment of, of Kubernetes clusters. Uh, then I'll introduce uh, Starling X a little bit first, but to make sure people understand what it is, and I'll give a short demo of, uh, of us actually deploying remotely uh, what we call a subcloud on a distributed cloud. So Starling Edge is, a, is, is an edge cloud technology, so it's basically a uh, Kubernetes, built around Kubernetes, built around CentOS operating system. We can run OpenStack optionally, but it's a, it's a cloud deployment. We can deploy it in a number of configurations. You can see here we can deploy it all the way down for an edge, and typically an edge configuration down to one or two nodes. Uh, one if you don't need high availability in a hyper-converged configuration. Uh, we can deploy it in a, a duplex if you need higher or need uh, redundancy or if you need even higher capacity. Uh, one of the other configurations we have is what we call distributed cloud. And distributed cloud is where we take a central cloud, run it as a control plane, controlling, uh, monitoring, controlling, deploying, updating, running functionality like that, also acting as a registry for all these subclouds. The subclouds themselves, or the, these individual clouds, are all autonomous. So they're all their own Kubernetes cluster. They're all uh, tar typically targeted at uh, high availability and low latency applications. Uh, so the, and we can deploy up to uh, up to a couple hundred, and we can deploy horizontally. We can deploy with with our distributed cloud configuration. We can deploy deploy out to a thousand sites today, so we could have a thousand sites all controlled, all monitored, all installed by a central uh, site. Uh, optionally, I think I, I might have mentioned it too. Optionally, they're all they're basically co Kubernetes, but also we can run OpenStack on them uh, if you need virtual machines and container support. Uh, container support is what we get out of the box, and then you can run virtual machines. We're not running, although you can. We're not running Kubernetes on virtual machines. We're running Kubernetes next to virtual machines. So this is just a little bit about what I'll show you, and and. The kind of the steps. So we're gonna we have a system controller installed, and we want to just deploy a single subcloud. We want to do it remotely. This the assumption is that the server is out of the box installed, has not had anything installed, no operating system, and it has a, a base a baseboard management controller VMC in it. So with the, really the phasing is that you we would uh, initially do the remote install using Redfish from the system controller install the operating system and Kubernetes. We could do that in two ways. One is we could pre, we can pre-stage the files or put the files locally on there. And this helps if you have a, a scenario where you want to just put the machines out there and you don't want to download over the network. For instance, downloading a, an entire image and also downloading a lot of containers from a remote registry can take a lot of bandwidth on what might be a spotty network uh, to, to uh, that can take you know hours or, or you know just to transfer all these files. So you can pre-stage them, and that's kind of the pri what we show as the primary path here. And then I was also, if that path's not there, or if you've pre-staged the files, and they've changed, there's been an update since you've uh, deployed, then it can transfer the packages as well. And that would happen automatically. You don't need to uh, make any any uh, compensation for that. It'll it'll do that automatically. And the next phase, once we've rebooted and installed the software on it. Then we'll pull the images because there are part of, there are containers that are part of our, our platform, and then configure it. And in the end, we'll manage it. And what I'll do is I'll just run through about a I think it's about an eight or nine minute demo of us doing a, a remote deploy. Uh, in this case, from a command line. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just like the current number. There's no subclouds. So we have currently a system controller with no subclouds underneath it. And then basically one command, and all we need to pass in it to is some YAML files that give it information about how to, what to bootstrap, how to bootstrap, um, where the registries are, the credentials for the registries, things like that. Uh, also what the IP address is. Once it boots up, it needs to come up with an IP address so then we can manage it from there. Um, in this case, we're prompting for the passwords. So now the system controller is kicking off. In the background now, it's creating a, an ISO, and it's going to download that ISO and to a virtual media 
device on the board, the baseboard management controller at the remote site. And that's what's happening during the pre-deploy phase. So it's creating that ISO, downloading that ISO, and then it will boot the system, or boot the uh, remote device off this. In this case, we're just gonna do one node. We could, we could end up installing an entire cloud. When we do that, it'll install it from the first node. So all we have to do, the only time we have to do all of this on is on the first node to download. From then on, everything will download locally. And here's a, on the uh, UI, you can see the details. Right now it's in the offline disabled state, everything's unknown because that's, we're currently in the process of rebooting and we'll show in a second, doing the pre-install process. So now it's going through doing things like installing uh, the disk, partitioning the disks to get ready for our root and our other partitions that we need running. And now it's going through and it's starting to install all of our packages. So there you can see things like Kubernetes being installed, the Kubernetes package is being installed. And we kind of cut some out of the middle and there's about 1,200 packages total being installed there. And on the edge, or is this still creating this ISO file? This is actually when, it's, when the ISO boots, it's booting and the ISO is actually doing an auto install. So we're watching the auto install of that from the ISO. Is it possible to include all the packages already in the ISO that it can install? Offline? They are in the ISO. The files are in the ISO, so it's, it's pulling them out and installing them uh, in the operating system. Right. Thank you. And then now it's, it's setting some of the apps here. You can see it's, it, we're tailing the an, an Ansible file, so we're basically running an Ansible playbook here to do the install from. Then you come back, it's now finally at the point it's doing the post install scripts. Now it's rebooting. So this is the reboot steps. We'll see the uh, HP sl uh, splash screens in a second. So this is booting up with, uh, with the, the operating system we've just installed, the Kubernetes, all of our services in Starling X are being installed or were installed. And then the next thing we'll start to do is run, there'll be an Ansible playbook that we're running to do the actual uh, the next phase of the update to do a lot of the configuration now. So we've installed all of the operating system and, and, and tools, but we need to configure them. So here we're going to boot into Linux and we'll see the uh, login prompt in a second. And you can see back on the system controller, we're just waiting for the waiting for it to come up now. Once we've given you know, these commands to boot and configure it, or to boot and install, now we're waiting for it to come back up and uh, respond over the network. We should go back to the... Uh, and all, the, all of this was initiated by that first uh, command where the, the DC manager subcloud install command. So we haven't had to do anything manually, we're just waiting for things to happen. We go back now. We're still offline disabled, and it should be changing soon. And you can see, like up on the top, we're still in a disabled state with one of them because of the single subcloud. That dashboard is, by the way, showing system controller. If we had a thousand subclouds, you'd see all of those. So now we're running the uh, the Ansible playbook to really to do all the configuration. It's doing a lot of things. It's configuring. Uh, Keystone, in this case we're using Keystone for identity. Uh, we're using some of the OpenStack services without running OpenStack in the, in the Kubernetes, like, like uh, the Barbican and uh, uh, Keystone. And now it's restarting some of the services after it's configured and waiting for that to happen. Is Keystone a dependency? Uh, it's part of the platform, yes. That's what we use for, well, we use that and Horizon as well. We use those for as parts of our, of our distribution. Now it's doing things with the registry. So it's actually creating, there's a, a central registry, and now it's creating also a local registry on the subcloud. So every time now, for instance, when our platform reboots, it can get the, it can get the containers images from local registry, not from a remote registry. Now it's waiting for the controller zero, which the controller zero is always our first node in, in a, in a subcloud, waiting for that to come up. 
and now it's waiting for the, the Kubernetes pods that were started that are part of our platform. So at this point, we're still getting the platform up and running, and in the end, we'll get it to the point where we're ready to run workloads. <laughs> This is like the, there's also some uh, Armada and Helm stuff that's going on. That's what's happening here. We're, we're running all that and the, the configuration and, and uh, rebooting. And then now we can see, we'll see when we run a, a DC manager subcloud list command, we'll see that now we're unmanaged but in the bootstrapping state. So it's still not quite done. And now it's, it is kind of getting to the end of the actual bootstrapping. And it actually does another reboot, so that this is the uh, shutting down. Again, we'll see the, the splash screen come back up. So when it comes back up, it's going to be basically everything's installed, everything's configured. The only thing it's not going to be is we haven't actually closed the loop to say now we want to actually have the system managed. So it'll be out of sync and unmanaged initially. It should be uh, in a complete state, so it's ready to be that. And we'll we'll do one manual, one more manual action to actually say I want to manage this. Now it's unmanaged but complete, and it's out of sync, and it won't be in sync until we actually manage it. So for the next, let me go back up here. That's telling us basically the same thing. Um, the only thing that's in sync is the certific certificates. And this is the step, this is the one thing. So now I'm going to say, I want, I'm, it's ready, it's up, it's, it's in an unmanaged state, now I want to manage it. So I'm going to go back to the subcloud list. It is now managed and complete and out of sync. So now what's happening right now is now it's, it's going to go synchronize everything because there's inventory, there's alarms. That's all going to get synchronized. You can see there's one major alarm that will actually go away in a second. You can see now the services are, are getting in sync. Let me do one more time here. So now everything is everything is green in terms of managed online, complete install, complete sync. We can SSH, now we can SSH, so this is SSH, SSHing into the subcloud itself. I think we're just gonna check one thing there just to see if it's happy and we're gonna run a, an alarm command just to see if there's any open alarms from the subcloud perspective, not from the, uh, the system controller's perspective, and there are none. So if we go back to here, it's everything's green. That's it. So we've gone basically remotely, zero touch, zero touch provisioning. We've we've deployed this entire subcloud with with our uh, st with the Starling X. And now we could do things. If we wanted to add more nodes, we could do that as well. And I guess with that we've done installing, I guess, you know, any interest, we're, um, we're upstairs if you want to talk to us in, in detail up there. But if you're interested, 
Uh, there's some links to, to the starting X site. Again, so it is a open infrastructure project, so we are uh, uh, up there, and, and there's a lot of details up there about that. And I guess, uh, any questions? Should have got some time. install a bunch of them and it will actually create that ISO file with, uniquely for each of the nodes. Because they might have other things that are different than IP addresses. bandwidth, low priority for uh, management traffic. So you don't want to, it helps you there because you don't have to deal with, you know, a four hour transfer time of a two gig file. Do you have a question? Yeah, so what's the initial point of discovery? Do you have remote hands throw the device out somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you first see it happen out? What we would, what we would see first is we, Part of the provisioning is we'd be told what the, the baseboard man, the BMC controller address is, and that's all we need. So we can go out, if that, if that IP address is reachable, then we can, uh, from there, do all everything we need to do, which is to uh, push down that virtual media image, reboot it through the BMC. So there's no discovery, you actually... Right, it's no, no actual discovery, correct. No actual discovery of the BMC, we are told the BMC's address and credentials. For that, we're using Redfish. Yes. Uh, well, we're we're remote, so we can't really pixie boot remotely over a, over a layer three network back to a system controller. We do after we install that first node, which you call controller zero. Any future nodes that, like a secondary controller or worker nodes they are pixie booted from the system control, or sorry, from the controller at the site. So there's no going back over the network to do those. And that's typical of a private net, like a private 10 gig network. So you don't have to go over the customer's network typically. No, you're going to get one ISO pushed down to the site, and everything else will be pixie booted from the controller at that site. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We don't have you know the idea of a seed node or something. When we install that first controller, it becomes the source for everything locally after that point. And the only the only reason to go back with the system controller is if you know, we're pushing down upgrades or uh, pushing up uh, alarms or things like that or inventory. So it becomes like your basket. Pardon me? So the first node that you see about the head site will come to the basket. It, it is, but it's also a full up Starling X uh, node, uh, hyper-converged, so it can be running workloads as well. Yeah, so we don't, we don't reserve a node for that purpose. Mm -hmm. I can have something that's strict. It doesn't have to be a full-blown Linux kernel hosting Kubernetes. I can deploy anything I want. If, I'm not sure I understand. You're, you're pushing, you could, I mean, through Redfish? There are, there are devices that I will have at the edge that aren't necessarily part of the Kubernetes infrastructure. Right.
Well, if you want to take this offline too, I can talk. We can talk more detail if you want. I, I'd like to understand your use case. I think you might be getting close to some other use cases that we're looking at because uh, when you get into industrial use cases and things, you start to have a lot more devices that aren't uh, aren't cloud enabled devices or cloud devices, right? So how do you talk to them? Yes. We're done. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs>